Hey, check it out. Got some food. Give it a try. It, it's not something I would enjoy. And honestly, I don't think you would either. You want some though, hungry fella? Here, come on, buddy. Give it a try. Don't forget who gave you that. Don't spend it all in one place. He didn't want it. Okay, well, that's, that's your choice. They make choices too. Everyone's got a choice in life, and going vegan, well, that's not one of them. It's not really one of them at all. Now, why would I say that going vegan is not a choice? Uh, it obviously feels like a choice to a lot of people, and yet I noticed that I've been saying this a lot lately. In fact, I had a conversation not too long ago with a guy in the YouTube comment section, and he completely misunderstood what I meant by it. He thought that I meant that our governments should start enforcing veganism and taking away people's right to choose what they eat. And um, even though I know how beneficial it would be if everyone went vegan, that's obviously not what I meant, nor is it what I want. So to clear up that conversation, I just said that no one will be forcing anyone to go vegan, especially not our government, because they're the ones funding this insanity through subsidies. And I think you'd be hard pressed to find a vegan activist using force because unnecessary violence is the opposite of what veganism is. But I know there's this habit people have to throw around this term militant vegan because a lot of people have chosen a pretty aggressive way to spread this message. But when you think about it, the idea that it's acceptable to torture and kill innocent and defenseless beings on our behalf is probably much more militant than anything a vegan activist could ever say or do. So it's kind of ironic to be hearing non-vegans calling vegan activists militant. But that's not really the point. The point is that we should all be free to choose whether or not to go vegan. But at the same time, there is still a lot of truth to what I say, that going vegan is not a matter of personal choice. And so we have a kind of a paradox on our hands. And I hope I can explain that paradox in this video. Now, the first thing that comes to my mind when I say that going vegan is not a choice, it's Mother Nature, because she might force people to go vegan. But it wouldn't be the kind of veganism that comes to mind for most people. Um, anyone who's seen the documentary Cowspiracy knows that Animal agriculture is an environmental disaster. It's totally unsustainable. It's an emergency. So in that sense, these are the last days of animal exploitation. Whether we know it or not, or whether we accept it or not, humans will not be in a position to be deciding whether or not to go vegan for much longer if we allow this to continue. But that could all just be fear-mongering and sensationalism, and I think people have had enough of that. They don't seem to be responding very well to the warning bells that vegan activists are sounding. So I think as long as the environment is still relatively habitable, we should focus on the animal rights, because that's where nothing is really up for debate. Although we do still have a paradox on our hands, so that's what I want to talk about now, is the animal rights paradox. So here it is. If you're living in the old paradigm, or the old way of thinking, now when I say the old way of thinking, I don't mean old people, because there are plenty of middle-aged people who have accepted and embraced this new paradigm, just like there are plenty of younger people who have been well indoctrinated into the old paradigm. When I say the old paradigm, I mean speciesism, which says that some animals, not all animals, dogs and cats, we love the shit out of them, <laughs> right? But specifically farmed animals, they don't count, yeah? They don't matter. They just act on instinct. They're not individuals like us, and God gave us dominion over them. So maybe we should think about treating them a little nicer, but we should still be able to use, kill, and exploit them in some ways. And don't you ever, in this speciesist paradigm, try to compare an annual holocaust of 50 billion land animals and 90 billion marine animals to a one-time holocaust of 12 million people because that's just like apples and oranges, right? I mean, human life is obviously way more valuable than the lives of non-human animals, even though we don't actually contribute anything of value to this planet and our extinction would benefit every living organism here. But we're just better, okay? I, I don't know how to explain it. We're better and so 
if you're living in that paradigm, then obviously in your perception, it is a matter of personal choice to go vegan. But luckily, or unluckily, depending on where you stand, a lot of us have been able to break free of that old way of thinking, mainly thanks to a little documentary called Earthlings. I don't know if you heard of it. And Gary Yarofsky's famous YouTube speech might have helped with that too. But either way, we now know that what we used to think of as food, namely bacon, burgers, steak, pork, um, you name the euphemism, what that actually is, is the cut up body of a once living animal, who was definitely an individual, and we believe had a fundamental right not to be used as property. And therefore, anyone who is still consuming animal products is participating in an injustice, a social injustice. So there's the paradox. Depending on where you stand, the old paradigm or the new one, going vegan is still just a matter of choice, and at the same time, it isn't, because it isn't. Now, I want to say that I know it must be difficult for people to go from this kind of safe position where they can say things like, you know, I met a vegan activist one time, and they seem pretty cool, I can appreciate what they're doing, but veganism's not really for me, it kind of, seems kind of extreme, and I think as long as I respect their lifestyle, they should be able to respect mine, right? Well, to go from that to all of a sudden, oh shit, I'm on trial right now, you know, I'm being charged with second degree murder <laughs> all of a sudden, it, I can see how that would be shocking, but in all honesty, that is the vegan message. So, I guess my real intention in making this video was to try to help remind people, non-vegans and vegans, but particularly vegan activists, of just how strong this message actually is when it's approached from the abolitionist perspective. Because there's a lot of vegan YouTubers nowadays who are focused mainly on the health aspect of veganism, and I think there's a tendency, when it's done that way, to lose sight of the bigger picture and to get pulled back into the speciesist paradigm. And when that happens, it almost turns into this game of how can we coax people into going vegan, or how can we win them over, and how can we almost trick them, really, into making what we already know to be the only justifiable choice. And I think it also opens the door for a lot of fear and doubt to creep into people's minds. And I do hear a lot of people saying that they're worried about the vegan movement losing its credibility, or they're worried about misrepresenting what the World Health Organization has to say about veganism, or they're worried that the Vegan Gains channel might be turning people away from veganism. And there's obviously some truth to that, but now that I have the abolitionist approach in mind, uh, I honestly can't see how this movement could fail when there's such a powerful and self-evident truth already on our side. Now, obviously, no two humans are alike, so some people are naturally going to be drawn to the health aspect of the vegan movement, and others can resonate with that image of the Native American with the teardrop coming down their cheek for the environment, and I can definitely relate to that. But what I really want to share is that regardless of the form of activism that you're doing, I think it's really wise to come to a deeper understanding of speciesism, because to use an analogy, Vegan activists are like doctors, <laughs> not to get too full of ourselves, obviously, but we are providing a medicine for a very sick and potentially terminally ill society. So the first thing a doctor does is diagnose the patient, and anyone who's looked into it knows that speciesism or anthropocentrism is definitely the root of the problem. It's what needs to be cured if we're to have a livable future. So in keeping with that analogy, uh, as a vegan doctor, you obviously have a choice of three medicines, and all of them are pretty damn solid. The first two will definitely help alleviate a lot of the symptoms. And they might end up curing the disease, eventually, because most people find ethical veganism after going vegan for some other reason. But the way I see it, even if you got everyone or most of society to go vegan for 
some superficial reason, all it would take is a phone call from the meat industry to some fashion designer to have them start pushing some new kind of cow skin jeans or some crazy shit and or to convince the environmental groups that we somehow needed fragmented bone chips or something like that to help with the environment. Now I know that sounds crazy, but that's what I'd be doing if I were the meat industry is looking for a new way to sell the same kind of exploitation and it would be easy in a society that doesn't freaking get it or see anything wrong with it. But even if you think all that's unrealistic, my point is we have a medicine that will cure the disease once and for all. And of course, not everyone's going to be able to accept it right away because it's just that radical. But we don't need everyone. We just need enough. And we have to have faith that enough people will be able to hear and understand the abolitionist, abolitionist message if it's communicated properly. So I hope this video helped. And Thanks for watching. There's one more quote I want to leave you with that I think sums up everything really nicely. So, thanks.